Hello, top fans. This is Jamie Wagner, also known as at TFR Dodger fan. I am with Pete uh, with the Sheffield Shuffler. Hello, Pete. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me today. Oh, not a problem. Uh, thank you for coming on. It's it's awesome to get fresh blood <laughs> into the <Yes>. clubhouse. <laughs> right? Yes. So I hear through the grapevine that you are a Cubs fan. I am. I was uh, born and raised in Chicago, um, lived in the suburbs, you know, 40 minutes outside of Chicago most of my life. Then I moved to the city after college and I lived on Sheffield and Addison for about four years. Um, that's where I get the name Sheffield Shuffler. Uh, I lived in Lakeview. So yes, I have been a resident of Chicago um, a good part of my life. Big Cubs fan. It's been rough most of my life, but you know, 2016 really just uh, it was worth it. So that's my story. I am sure uh, you were doing the, the Rizzo dance, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's a Rizzo <laughs> dance. There's um, I mean, we got uh, the walk-up songs. We had a Starling Castro clap and yep. we got, we got a bunch of inside jokes. And you also had Bill Murray on SNL uh, singing the go Cubs go song. We did. We had David Ross on there, Rizzo, Dexter Fowler and short shorts having fun with it. That was a, that was a good week. They, they were all over the place. Like you said, SNL, there was other celebrity spots. The parade was one of the biggest uh, gatherings of humans on planet earth. Did you know that it was over 5 million, five to 7 million. I think it was like 5 million people gathered for the parade. And I think it ranked seventh or eighth on the list of all time most gathered events in the world that's insane yeah that's insane and i i thought the san francisco giants were winning their third consecutive you know their third world series that that was a huge parade um, yeah you know but that's insane i did not know that about that parade yeah. And if you see it, just, it's just a testament to the outreach of Cubs fans. And I don't know if you noticed too, but they travel very well um, mm -hmm. too. You know, you go to Arizona, Florida, California. I mean, there's usually a good amount of Cubs fans, whether it's because they relocated or what have you, but yeah, we're all over the place. Oh yeah. Um, I'm, I'm for, well, I'm not, unfortunately, but I, my father-in-law is from Chicago mm -hmm. and he is a White Sox fan. So and he, I, I think he absolutely loathes the Cubs. I was going to say, let me guess. He hates the Cubs more than he likes the White Sox. Yeah. And I don't understand yeah. that. It's like you're Neither both Chicago teams. So you might as well just like enjoy both of them. That's double the baseball. I, I would say that's a plus, right? They are, I don't know if you would say toxic, but they, yes, hate the Cubs more than they support their team. Most of the time I have seen, I don't want to speak for all fans, but most of the Sox fans that I know hate the Cubs and want to talk trash about the Cubs more than they will support their own team. It's weird. It is like, you know, like, why are you so obsessed with me kind of thing? You know, yeah. that, that, is, that is weird. Well, it's kind of like Giants and A's fans. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you can actually be both. I know one's from the American League and one's from the, you know, but it's just they they stole the world series from the giants and that just kind of like irritates me in the 89 mm. world series um and i there's a lot of debate over that i used to be a giants fan that mm. i grew up being a giants fan and uh what two years ago i became a dodgers fan and oh, nice so i i'm sticking with my my boys in blue <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're awesome it's like it's like a big brother little brother syndrome right you're from yeah. either the same state same town and there's always going to be that yeah that's some kind of rivalry you know this fan base is better at that or what have you but yeah it's like that little sibling rivalry yeah that's how we feel about the angels you know they're they're <laughs> yeah. they're the the redheaded yeah, stepchild <laughs> yes yeah right everyone forgets about them right yes exactly and they have a really beautiful stadium you know you ride the train in it's absolutely gorgeous but i don't think anything can so far that I've been to can be Chavez Ravine. It's just a beautiful, wonderful ballpark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, oh, okay. That's behind you. Yeah. And gotcha. it's gorgeous. It really is. When you walk in, it's got this, I don't know, just this wonderful air about it. Um, and it reminds me of Candlestick Park when I used to go mm -hmm. as a kid. So 
So what's your favorite childhood memory of being a, a Cubbies fan? Oh my gosh. I mean, are there any favorite <laughs> childhood memory? The only good memories, good memories I have had have started from 2015 and went to 2018, yeah. 2019. Yeah. I mean, those are the good memories mm-hmm. of being a Cubs fan. Um, obviously when I was younger, what was it? 2003, what that was, or 2005, 2003, 2005, was the Bartman thing. I think it's 2003. That was just a bad memory. I mean, Alex, um, what's his name? Alex Gonzalez, the shortstop, bobbling that, you know, yeah. against oh, the Marlins. So there, there haven't really been too good. But you know what? The experience of going to Wrigley with your family, with my father, I've had so many good memories uh, at Wrigley Field with my dad. We went to a game one time and it rained till about, I think, 11 o'clock at night. They didn't start playing till 11 o'clock at night. So me and my dad get there about seven, raining. And we were sitting over the overhang and we just sat there and we talked and we had a couple of beers and we talked. We didn't see one pitch. And then we left and uh, they started playing at 11. They went to like one o'clock in the morning. But just being at Wrigley, I love that um, little square block area so much. and I loved it when it was Wrigleyville and not Wrigley World. Mm. So if you go there now, it's very corporate, bowling alleys, movie theaters, high-rise apartment buildings, hotels. It used to be the neighborhood, you know, yeah. the little dingy bars and, you know, the diner on the corner. That's when the feel of it was, was a lot different. So those are where my good memories are. That's how I feel about the uh, Giants ballpark, whatever name they have this week uh, for it. <laughs> um, and it, it's just so corporate. Um, I think I went in one year, I went to, I think it was 16 games at that mm-hmm. park. And it was just all corporate ticket holders, like yeah. just people who had just gotten it from work and like, oh, I've never been to a baseball game. Let's see what it's like. And then getting drunk and going, Woo! and it's yeah. like, I don't, yeah. I don't need this be a fan, you know? Right. Uh, but yeah. So you, uh, I, I have to say that the one I was, I was, uh, stationed in, um, the Navy at uh, Great Lakes, Illinois for my uh, schooling. And I, of course went to boot camp there, but I never got to Wrigley field mm-hmm. and I'm so bummed about it. That's on my bucket list for sure. Yeah. I mean, I know I'm biased, but if you see like a lot of players, Marcus Stroman just got signed there. He said that is one of the places I've always wanted to play anyone that is you know getting signed it's just different it's just the historic feel in the neighborhood right by the lake it's just Mm -hmm. it's a beautiful place honestly and I know I'm biased because it's my favorite (laughs) place but it truly is and you there's other people who aren't from Chicago that will you know kind of say that same thing yeah I you know it it is it is one of the things that I, I I regret not going to. I did get to go to Soldier Field, which is an amazing stadium for you the think Bears. So? Yeah, I it reminds me of Kizar, the original stadium for the 49ers. And it's just oh, okay. that old nostalgic. I'm very I like nostalgia. I'm mm-hmm. I'm very old school when it comes to to my ballparks and stuff. Um, but yeah, I yeah. So speaking of you know, stadiums and ballparks, which ones have you visited and which ones are on your bucket list that you haven't gone to? Um, I've been to obviously Cubs and White Sox. I have been to um, the one here in Philly. I've been to Milwaukee. Milwaukee is a beautiful, maybe not beautiful, very big, cool ballpark. It is very open. It's Mm -hmm. industrial. It's a lot of cement flooring but it's huge inside and they got that retractable dome. I love going to see baseball in uh, Milwaukee or as we call it Wrigley North. Oh, (laughs) interesting. Yeah. I'll have have to see it. Yeah. I really like that. But Oh, um, Fenway I've been to. um, But outside of that, not too many, honestly. So mostly East coast. Yeah. And then um, yeah. In Chicago and then Milwaukee. And that's about it. I mean, when I go to like a big city, like I've driven past, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, San Francisco, but I haven't attended any games. So I really do want to increase the amount of stadiums I go to this season. That is a a good goal. It really is. I highly recommend Chavez Ravine 
you know, Dodger mm-hmm. Stadium because it's just awesome, in my opinion. Um, humble opinion. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, I'm just not happy that the A's are moving from the Coliseum um, mm-hmm. because, you know, that's another one that reminds me of Candlestick. But yeah, the, I've just, I'm a West Coast girl, so I've only been to the West Coast area. <laughs> How about uh, Petco? I have been to Petco. Yeah. I heard that was really nice too. It's a very pretty stadium. Uh, yeah. I went there for a veterans appreciation night. It was really oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Also, um, my brother-in-law lives in Pittsburgh, PNC mm-hmm. Park. That's where I'm going to go this summer. And that is looks breathtaking. I mean, I don't like uh, the uh, Pirates, obviously, but the stadium <laughs> looks beautiful with the Allegheny River and the bridge right behind mm-hmm. it and the uh, skyline. Oh, yeah. Um, did you see Did you see they put lights around the bases? No, um, I didn't. So if you go to like their social media or something, they put like Christmas lights around the bases and a big lit up P in the outfield. It looked pretty cool. It was like oh, a little Christmas cool. thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. So, uh, so of course, you know, Wrigley is your favorite ballpark. Do you have one that you didn't like going to? Um, I mean, White Sox Park is <laughs> I agree. And I mean, and, and it's not just because it's the Sox, because I don't hate the Sox. When the Sox, I was excited when, you know, they have a young upcoming team. I can be happy for them. I have nothing against them. Their fan base, I don't like. It's yeah. in a part of the city that I don't like. Most people don't stick around outside there because it's not in the best area. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not around like a neighborhood or anything. Um, so I would say that. But like I said, I haven't been to too many um, and not too many that I didn't like. But if I had to t- guess one or say one, I would say, you know, U.S. cellular guaranteed rate or whatever it is this week, like you said. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, ballparks changing names just makes yeah. no sense to me. Yeah. So who is your favorite baseball player? Favorite baseball player of all time would be Derek Jeter. Derek oh. Sanderson Jeter. Uh, the way that he carries himself on the field and off the field, being a shortstop in the biggest market of sports, being in the spotlight 24 seven, I think he handled his business on the field and off the field immaculate. Never got in any kind of trouble. He always had his head on straight. He prioritized baseball. Of course he dated women and superstars and all that stuff. But I mean, that's to be expected when you're the shortstop for the Yankees. So good for him. And I just, um, I just love his, uh, his character as a person. And um, yeah, I just love Derek Jeter. I think he's a, a great guy. I was expecting a cub, but I'm, I'm impressed that you yeah. expand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Girl, it's just growing up. It's always been, I mean, he was the face of the base face of baseball for like two decades. You know what I mean? Like every cover of a baseball game or whatever is Derek Jeter. And um yeah, I just love that guy. I just think he is a, a good man, a good person. I obviously, I don't know him personally, but growing up as a child, I'm like, that guy is so cool, you know? No, don't tef- definitely that he is an amazing, amazing baseball player, right? for sure. Um, didn't he just recently make Hall of Fame? He did. This season or uh, this yeah. summer, he was inducted yeah, into the Hall of Fame. Yeah. There was only one person who didn't give him the, the first, uh, first uh, vote or whatever, so obviously someone has it out for him of but, course well there's yeah. always there's always gotta be haters uh, yeah and that's why i don't appreciate when like these younger kids who say disparaging things about him like his numbers aren't even that good he wasn't clutch i'm like listen little boy like i watched it with my own two eyes he was incredible okay yeah they're like he had to do that jump throw because he didn't have a strong arm i'm like yeah i know who cares? He's still yeah, exactly. making him plays, you know? Exactly. I have the same conversation with these kids that um, say that Will Clark wasn't, wouldn't be as good now uh, if you were playing. And I, I go, well, it was different baseball. You right. know, the, the, the rules were different. The, you know, the length of every, the, the seasons were different. So it's just like, um, you can't, it's like comparing apples and oranges. It's still baseball, but it's not the same. Right. um baseball so uh there's this controversy right now about inducting Barry Bonds into the Hall of Fame and I'm going no absolutely not the man cheated I'm sorry he cheated you don't juice 
I'm sorry, you just don't. And I know it's it's alleged, but I I watched the progression of his head increase in size. Mm -hmm. And I know people who work for the Giants who said, yes, we had to increase his helmet size. So no, absolutely Mm -hmm. not. Uh, Forever, he will have an asterisk next to that, you know, home run. (laughs) And for me, this is where I would, I'm going to disagree with you on this one. Um, I 100% believe Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, David Ortiz, Sammy Sosa, those guys I think should be in the Hall of Fame. Granted, they did cheat. Most of them, whatever, if it's in the Mitchell report, that's not proof, whatever. Um, But you can't tell the story of baseball without mentioning Barry Bonds. And there have been- there have been plenty of guys who did take steroids who didn't hit a ball like Barry Bonds. I think he's the best purest hitter baseball has ever seen that I have seen, but I understand he cheater, his head's huge, but I mean, the guy still needed, you still got to perform even if you are um, taking steroids. Also what I was thinking is that steroid era really saved baseball. I mean, we had that, we had that lockout in 94 and, you know, the steroid era of baseball bringing home runs back really drew a crowd and the McGuire and Sosa, like that race, 60 home runs, 60, like that was exciting. People who weren't even baseball fans tuned in. And oh, yeah. I think that also really helped grow baseball and keep people involved in baseball. So um, that is just why I think even if you are a steroid user, you still need to perform and granted, yeah, that's terrible. You shouldn't be a cheater. But um, I know there are plenty of people who have cheated and were not close to successful at all. So, no, and I agree with you on that point. It's just, are we rewarding cheating? You know, are we saying, okay, yeah, you can go ahead and be in the Hall of Fame, even though you cheated? I mean, wouldn't that be considered a reward? I mean, is that not what we did for the Astros? Ooh, yeah. I that's mean, exactly what, what happened? Did. What happened to them? I know. Hey guys, none of you are going to get in trouble. We just want to know the truth. Did you guys cheat? Okay, you cheated. Okay, all right. Well, yeah. nothing's going to happen to you guys. You're going to you're going to keep making money. Carlos Correa, you'll probably be offered three hundred million this off season, so everything will be okay. Yeah. You know, are we not rewarding that as well, just for just for their cooperation and, Amen. and knowing how that works? So. Yeah, um, you can see. I, I mean, I see both sides. I just lean yeah. with, you know, that. Well, no, I know it's a good position. I, I you, very valid arguments. Yeah, definitely. And you, you brought up the Astros, or as I call them, the asterisks, because yes, no, uh, and I love how when they came to Tasha Stadium, everyone's throwing garbage cans onto the field. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. wonderful. It was yeah. wonderful because yes, they cheated. And the, even the possibility that the that Correa could even come to the to Dodgers to our team, no way in he's, HE double hockey sticks. No, he, he's being associated with the Cubs now too. Ugh. I don't know if you saw they were singing they were singing um, a, a Christmas song and they put his name in it. Oh, that's uh, disgusting. So gross. And it's not the fact that they just cheated, but how arrogant they were about it. Do you remember when they had that press conference before the 2020 season? And yes. he's like, well, if you don't know what the bleep you're talking about, then keep your mouth shut. Carlos Correa said that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you are so ignorant. Oh, man. I you know. know. It, it, just, it baffles me. And then his whole home run and he's just like, this is my time. I'm like, oh, you are such yeah. an arrogant cuss. No. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's so easy to hate him. And, you know, Altuve, he kept his mouth quiet. Bregman really didn't say too much. Mm-hmm. At least they kind of cowered like, oh, man, we got caught. Yeah, they Correa's... showed shame. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And Correa, no, no shame whatsoever. And it's just disgusting how he's just continuing that non shameful, you know, stance where he's just so arrogant. And yeah. I, I just can't even associate that with the Dodgers because the Dodgers are such a family team. You know, I've, I've talked to so many people who've worked for the Dodgers, who've been lifelong Dodgers fans. And they're like, yeah, they're team, they're, they're very family oriented. And I'm like, well, yeah, you kind of have to be, I mean, look at the whole Trevor Bauer situation. One of the reasons why Max Scherzer didn't resign with us. It's like, mm. you know, one of the main, many reasons I wouldn't say it's the reason, but it's right. Yeah. Up there. There's there about 43 million other reasons why. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
Exactly. I think we were, I think we offered him like 1 million less mm -hmm. and then he went to, is he with the Mets now? I don't know. I yeah. stopped tracking him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It went to the Mets. And interestingly enough, so when they were recruiting him, his family lives in uh, Jupiter, Florida, which is mm -hmm. where the Mets have their spring training. So I think that was also another selling point too. Hey, your uh, children, your wife, you guys can all be here. So I think that's an additional thing that drew him to the Mets. Oh, definitely. And, yeah. you know, just probably, it, it, well, it kind of irritates me because he did say that he wanted to end uh, with the West Coast team. And so to just kind of like, turn around and like leave mm -hmm. and go to the back to the east or go to the east coast it just was like uh that makes no sense That's to me <laughs> <laughs> so okay so wrapping it up what are you most looking forward to this coming season this coming season looking forward to uh, Shohei Otani putting on another show, putting on another great season, pitching and hitting. I think people really underestimated and didn't really realize how special of a season he had to pitch as well as he did and to hit as well as he did. If, mm -hmm. if you know, you don't watch baseball closely or whatever, what we saw was amazing. It's incredible to have a two-way player. That's like someone playing linebacker and quarterback and mm -hmm. playing it really well, yeah. you know? excited for that. I'm excited for, um, yeah, uh, teams that are acquired, uh, like a hall, like the Mets, the Mets acquired, you know, Marte Escobar Scherzer. They're going to have a great one, two, um, pitching, uh, staff. Um, just any, I don't know, anything exciting for like underdogs, the, the brewers, the brewers could make a, a push again. Mm -hmm. Um, they got that, that elite starting two staff, um, just baseball in general. Every day is a blessing when when baseball is being played. You know, there's a new storyline every day. Of course, yeah. Uh, how, how do you? Uh, what are your thoughts on Texas with all with their half a billion dollar acquisitions? Yeah, I just don't really think it's going to amount to much. To be honest no. with you, no. I mean, it takes more than what they got. Um, and I'm not a fan of ten year deals. Yeah, I really can't. Besides, what is A Rod's second deal with the Yankees when he won like two MVPs in a World Series? Name name another 10, 12, 13, 14 year contract that paid off. I don't know one. Look at Albert Pujols. That contract that he signed with the Angels, although he was productive with the the Cardinals, that contract that he got with the Angels, he didn't perform yeah. up to up to that standard. You know, yeah. you see Tatis getting fourteen years. John mm -hmm. Carlos Stanton got thirteen with the Marlins. They offloaded him to the Yankees. So these teams that sign these long contracts, it's just like that's such a long investment on on a player. Yeah, I and but thankfully we got Pujols, so. I yeah. love I love my Tio, and yeah, I really want a pull holes hug. Um, yeah, I'm just putting it out there. If that can yeah. happen, I want a pull holes hug. If you hear it, yeah, yeah. So, well, thank you, Pete, for coming on, and I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's been awesome talking to you, and uh, let's do this again soon. Yes, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Um, if you, yeah, I, like I said, I put out baseball stuff. I got my at Sheffield Shuffler on most of my social media platforms. So love to keep in touch. I love talking baseball with like-minded people, other teams, stuff like that. Cause baseball is really a diehard sport and it, you don't really see any casual baseball fans like, Oh, I'll watch this. So when people love baseball and they like to talk about it, I'm, I'm all for it. So I really appreciate you having me. Definitely. Anytime. Well, that's it. Top fans. And, uh, we will see you next time at the next clubhouse. You all have an outstanding day and go forth and play ball.